So Ding Liren was white against white E. Let's have a look. C4, line F6, knight C3, C5, symmetrical English opening. So this is a critical match encounter in round 4.6. So I think this is the 10 minute games. G3, G6, Bishop G2, Bishop G7, E3, white normally intends D4 here. Black castles, knight G E2. So it looks as though definitely D4 is usually played. But actually after E6, no, D4 wasn't played instead. After this E6, we get B3 d5 and now d4 might be um on the cards let's actually add a bit to here fritz is quite stable sometimes all right bishop a3 all right if d4 here this wasn't played um then then knight a4 that could be unpleasant this position for black is unpleasant because we've got that pin going on we can't play b6 so this position here gives white an edge apparently so actually way he chose what seems to be a very very good move in the circumstance let's connect to light book we're actually out of light book already actually somehow this this opening has has kind of drifted away off the rails there were 173 games there e6 only 13 usually players with black play knight c6 so e6 drifted the game off the rails to like out of live book already completely out of live book believe it or not in this game so that's the combinatory explosion of chess at move eight after bishop a3 this this game is there sound What's happened to the sound now? Dominguez. Did it just go? Yeah, sound okay. This game's completely gone away from Livebook. Is this yesterday's game or tonight's tiebreaker? The date on this game is uh, tonight's tiebreaker. It's 22nd September 2015. This was played today. So Queen A5. Um, sorry, Queen A5 was played, hitting the bishop, protecting this. So Knight A4, shielding the bishop. Now Black protects C5. White castles A6, as though there's an immediate B5 threat to use to win some material. Queen c1 protecting the bishop in advance of any b5. And now we have knight e4, which is threatening. Bishop takes a1. And also threatening knight takes d2. So white parries both with d4. b6. Bishop b2. And the engines have this as um, slightly better for white. Actually a clear advantage for white. I think something about this position black's slightly sensitive on the dark squares i'm not sure the queen is looking like a really awkward piece on a5 as, as though the queen might be trapped actually uh potentially uh here i mean it looks nearly trappable uh if it was like bishop c3 was possible it's not but it would like be trapping the queen right uh, we have c takes d4 c takes d5 e takes d5 bishop takes d4 and so if the bishop can be exchanged off then there's you know, potentially these these dark square weaknesses is sometimes fun b5 yeah white just takes off that bishop and moves the knight back actually um was there anything better here M well queen b2 check is also interesting take the opportunity but no knight a c3 and we have bishop b7 queen b2 now so first thing the horrible checks knight df6 knight takes e4 d takes e4 and 
actually yeah this is only a 10 minute game and I'm not sure we can put this game under intense scrutiny but it seems as though white is almost like has got a crushing advantage believe it or not in this position um, it seems like a plus two position for for white here according to uh, this engine if you were white what would you play in this position white's play it's apparently there's a plus two move in this position what would you play with white a uh, hint uh, this knight's pinned white to play if i gave you 20 seconds starting from now anyone this is a 10 minute game so i think we should be able to find a lot of improvements in the actual gameplay white white in the game played rook a rook move but apparently it seems as though f3 might be a critical test of this knight pin for example taking is really bad like this bishop takes b7 and it's kind of end of game this, this position is just really tricky in fact uh, because you know if takes then we, then we just gang up on on the night pin yeah so for some reason um <laughs> ah i think i seem to remember a comment actually a kibitza on on chess games gone mention mentioning that yeah maybe ding liren isn't the strongest on this time control or something if he had played 20 f3 this whole game would have been a different story i think someone actually could bits that on chess games com and i was wondering what that was about but now now i see it um or maybe it was somewhere else okay anyway so 20 f3 looks looks like pretty dangerous has anyone got any defensive ideas If if we move um I don't know the knight if we move the king away, queen takes f6. Yeah, I mean I, I don't believe that. Yeah, it seems quite clear cut. It was mentioned somewhere, I think. Maybe it was in the main chat for the World Cup on move twenty. If F3 had been played it could have been a different story. I'm I'm sure someone mentioned this. Anyway, everyone's everyone's engine checking these games and it's only a ten minute game, right? But it's critical. So let's let's see just the flavor of it how, how they played after queen b6 so yeah it's, it's a shame the coordination didn't happen rook d4 white was perhaps tempted by the d-file uh to get something like this maybe this was the temptation to get to the d-file like this but black contests the d-file and now gets out of that very dangerous pin uh relying on tactics here to defend he's going to able to defend the f6 so the worst is over for black after a near disastrous opening rook takes d4 rook takes rook d8 queen d2 rook takes e takes d4 queen e6 so the worst is over black's got a pawn which is full, fully supported by all the pieces at the moment uh queen f4 queen c6 hitting the knight but this knight's hit so White just ignores that. That's protected. Now renewing the threat on the knight. The knight moves. And then we have queen c2, uh, which basically wins a pawn. And there would appear to be some positional um, positional downside to this that white gets a blockade, a nice blockade. And he's also got this prospect to harass the bishop if that pawn's taken. But this is exactly what way he does. He, I don't know, it seems crazy, this position. If queen b is such a, a dangerous idea, uh, or queen c7, queen b8 to try and harass this bishop. Because it's all alone here. It's it's only got, like, uh, only a few squares here. 
So believe it or not, wait, he, he apparently he's good on blitz chess. And I don't know, he does actually take on a2. It seems a bit crazy because the bishop's actually virtually trapped. Queen c7. So where is this bishop actually going? Um, well, if it goes to d5, then queen e5, and we've got that nasty pin again. We've got knight g4 on the cards, right? As well as knight takes d5. Uh, so what does white do here? This, this is horrible, isn't it? Uh, it's very tricky. You know, if, if here, then knight g4 is like winning. So it's it's nearly lost. But um, no, there's another fantastic move played here to distract the queen to the outer, outer Hebrides, bishop a8. If the bishop's going to be munched, it's going to be munched right in the corner. This is incredible for a 10 minute game, uh, this concept, bishop a8. If, if this was a calculated concept, to let the bishop be trapped to get the queen over here it's incredible so queen b8 um there might be a better idea than what was played though the engines pick out everything apparently bishop c6 might be okay and if if this chase then bishop here apparently this is okay for black but okay but this is a cool idea anyway bishop a8 queen b8 now black plays check we have king h2 queen e1 so that the idea is that if on taking queen takes f2 is either an amazing bit of bluff or it's it's like really works um the, the idea is if the queen uh, is here it's hitting e3 it's dragging this this pawn forward uh white chicken out here he actually went back to, avoided munching bishop he kind of went back to f4 Okay, now let's see what happens if, if this bishop is taken. Queen takes f2. It's it's nearly equal, apparently. Uh, say knight d5, that might be one of the stronger moves. e3. And this pawn's like crashing through with this pin. Knight takes f6. V very, very sharp position. If white's given the chance, he'll play queen f3. So play, say black proceeds with e2. Apparently this is equal. Knight g4 hitting the queen. And in this position, apparently white can 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 kind of draw this, believe it or not. For example, knight e3, this one, queen here, allowing the pawn to queen. Because we get a perpetual check. it's just perpetual check time if if the king ever goes over here where's well, that like mate so yeah um it's it's uh complex tactics but yeah maybe a, again as i say it's a 10 minute game and apparently e even though that's a beautiful concept bishop a8 apparently black well, it's actually given us the engine's top choice now for some reason um yeah no bishop a8 queen queen here no, no, here is the apparent inaccuracy that instead of this check, black could actually have gone here. Let's have a quick look at this. Queen d6, bishop d7. This this position here is, is okay for black. So yeah. But anyway, let's go back to the game. So check we have here. White went back to f4. So black has nabbed this pawn, chipped away, got a two to one pawn majority. And got away with it. His bishop still intact. Queen c3 is going for another pawn now. Second helping on the queen side. Now here, White goes for a kind of perpetual check with knight f5 check, opening up the black king position. If the king like goes here, then it's like getting mated. Queen b8 check. This is like horrible. Uh, this this is slaughter time. Uh, so Black has to oblige actually in opening up his king and it seems at least you know isn't white going to get a perpetual check the king's like really exposed here uh but bishop c6 now was played because white is actually threatening check and twin bishop so the bishop is protected there on c6 we have check and now d5 bishop drops to e8 
b4 protecting that pawn fixing these two so at the moment this 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 pawn's fixing both of those queen f6 but if black can get to an end game he might be better because this king could crawl and eat this one and then eat this one so white keeps the queens on h6 h4 and again okay although black has nabbed that pawn on the queen side engine suggests white's actually better here so technically of course black's a pawn up but these are double pawns and these two pawns are kind of fixed by that one pawn furthermore um white's gonna set up a nice blockade potentially with something like queen f4 or, or play like h5 and maybe target f5 soon so this is an interesting move now f4 it, it confuses things a bit it's a bit of a risky move but if black doesn't do something uh, if you're playing black here and you don't do something i think you're dead basically even though you're a pawn up you're dead uh if if for example as an example king f8 it's just to play away and move h5 let's just move back i think white can improve the position let's just just see with bishop h3 and then like queen c8 is happening and, and this one's dropping off yeah uh, it's it's just going to be pretty bad um potentially so anyway we have this this kind of gamble this f4 which does drop e4 uh so bishop takes e4 was played f takes g and now we have king takes g3 and white still better here uh technically king f8 check now d6 so white is actually threatening bishop f5 d7 end of game so white is a bit in trouble here he has to stop things like that uh, he plays bishop d7 and then we have f3 we have check white's still better here h5 queen f4 uh, this might be a slight inaccuracy queen d4 apparently uh apparently moving the king is better so what happens here after queen d4 well there's a check and now this h5 pawn drops off making it less clear queen f6 as though like white's threatening now the check and to take the bishop so queen g5 stopping that check and actually after queen g5 blacks now almost like equalizing or being slightly better white plays queen e7 and off this yes black is actually better now probably to hold on in this game queen d4 was needed and say black tries to push this queen c5 this is really dangerous if white ever took then these pawns are crashing through and if this then uh we can take this so that that would be the way to play it but uh in the game white really goes downhill now after queen e7 so white now can win this critical 10 minute game so who says blitz chess isn't important uh it is with increments uh queen takes e7 king g7 and now black is threatening king f6 to round up this pawn bishop f5 trying to distract queen bishop c6 bishop e4 bishop e8 uh so yeah white can go for this pawn but he's going to be losing e7 now so he's losing e7 and here you know black is now a pawn up uh and the king is also threatening now to get active uh so bishop c6 here king d5 so once king c4 happens this is bad news king c4 king takes b4 two pawns up and white is threatening here bishop e6 to queen the pawn so if a casual move then there's bishop e6 right which is just kind of winning this this would be winning so that's something to avoid but white e spots this i think at various points apparently he had less than a minute of thinking time so apparently you know way he is is pretty sharp he's, he sees a lot of things even if he's got less than a minute so he played bishop d5 stopping this this final kind of trap and here 
White resigned. And yeah, it's it's a it's it's a fighting game. It's a ten minute game with increment right? but it was critical for White E to go through. He's beaten basically the number seven in the world the top Chinese player and he's through to the next round and he'll be playing Peter Zvidler and I know that the last time he played Peter Zvidler he lost actually with the white pieces it was in um China against Russia match uh, so it's going to be a very very tough match against Peter Zvidler but very very interesting to see I think maybe that's tomorrow even does anyone know when that Peter Zvidler match is so Peter Zvidler against Wei E uh, there's a there's a kind of results tree. Uh, I don't know if you all know about the results tree on the official site. I can give you the link, and uh, you can see this beautiful knockout sheet tree. Um, have you all seen Have you all seen the knockout tree? Seen the knockout tree? To put this game in context, anyone? I'll, I'll, try, I'll try and get the link. The results tree is, is very nice to look at. Here's the link on, on YouTube, at least. I'll try and give the link here. I don't think it accepts links. That's the problem. So you see that Way E, yeah, is due to play now uh, Peter's Vidler. Yeah, he's. If you start from the left, Ding Liren against Wei Yi. Uh, I'm going to zoom it. So three and a half, two and a half. He goes through. So he's playing Peter Zvidler. And so that's that's pretty interesting. And the winner of Peter Zvidler against Wei Yi um, will play against the winner of was it Giri against Matvachel Grave. So that's on the left hand side of the tree. See the results tree? Okay, so that was a critical game. You see you see why I'm showing this game. It's just of critical importance for this results tree. Yeah. Let's put this on zoom hundred percent. So if you want we can pick out some critical games to look at you see on, on, on st st staying with the left hand side of the results tree you also see that um, Giri knocked out watch the sick what is sick and that there was actually an interesting cute little game in that match Pro probably not too critical but I'd, I'd like to show that actually it might have been the critical one uh, so if we go on the left of that tree, we'll, we'll see how um, Giri won three one against Wojciech. Yeah. Okay. There's an interesting Giri game to have a look at. Uh, okay. So Giri against Wojciech. Okay. I'll get I'll get how to pronounce it as well. Hang on. When I say watch sick, what I mean is, oh, doesn't it have the thing? It doesn't have the thing. Oh well. Let's just go over the game. <clears throat> this is in round 4.3. I'm going to show you a, four, a critical 4.3 game. Uh, Kuz Orlog on, on YouTube stream uh, says, I think Wei was down to under 10 seconds a couple of times. When he was under pressure in the end, so yeah, very resourceful play, brilliant, um, brilliant play under pressure. So it's not just the test of classical chess. This is a test of nerves, massive test of nerves and stuff. I wouldn't say it's like blitz chess. There's too much at stake. Um, so anyway, in this game, let's have a look at this game. So round four point three. So they played their first like two classical games. Let me see. They drew their classical games to start off with. Then Giri won with black. And actually all he needed to drew, do. Sorry, no, 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 no. Sorry, pardon me. Sorry, th this was 4.3. Yeah. So there was another game after this. Okay, let's have a look. 
this one. So Anish Giri playing white against Radoslav Radoslav Watasic. So c4, knight f6, knight c3, e6. I used to find this variation quite curious because it seems as though black's deliberately allowing e4, as though e5 is dangerous. But this is well trodden. There's over a thousand games in this position. d5. And we have c takes d from Anish Giri. e takes. And he goes with e5. It looks aggressive, but it invites this knight e4. Okay. Knight f3, 48 games here. So the most usual move apparently is knight c6. Black played bishop f5. And we're kind of out of live book nearly after d4. We're kind of in a quite a rare position again. It's, it's not seen much in live book unless we transpose back. Bishop b4, bishop d2, black took on c3, bishop takes c3, black castles, bishop e2. And black logically seems to undermine d4 here with the move c5 and it, it's it's remarkable that um well i i find this game a little bit strange and remarkable because white captures away uh from the center sorry is what a six pronounced like white shek okay white shek okay that sounds better doesn't it white shek okay thank you cook cause or log yeah white shek apparently all right so anyway in this position you know white well the bishop's not doing much let's face it on c3 it's not doing much yeah so white captures away from the center he gets that d4 square for the knight in doing so but his pawn structure is completely wrecked yeah for a bit but it, what did he lose that dark square bishop do we care does he care not really bishop e4 and we have castles not caring about bishop f3 because obviously this diagonal will be sensitive so knight d7 and black seems to have a choice of pawns to, to collect knight d4 here especially after this which one to take now when i was playing through this game i was wondering why didn't black consider taking on e5 i don't know if that's completely obvious to you guys why knight takes e5 is, is not possible maybe it is knight takes c5 was chosen let's have a quick look at knight takes e5 it seems to run into something horrible here this knight takes e5 runs into f3 forcing move bishop g6 f4 and actually <laughs> white's winning a piece because where does the knight go then we take here and then we can play f5 winning a piece so yes there's a very good reason why black took on c5 um, not e5 and you often find that that your visual you know understanding of position uh, needs to be put right in front of in contrast with the exact forcing moves sequences so visually like you know why not knight takes e5 it just loses knight takes e5 loses does everyone accept that that you cannot accept your visual senses in chess you know this basic seemingly passive forcing but weakening it wins a piece wins a piece in this particular position do, do you all accept uh if i pose that question knight takes e5 is not possible right see you can't trust your visual senses you want to take a center pawn tough you can't yeah you have to take the c5 pawn correct all right so knight takes c5 Um, okay, so here we do have um, this forcing move anyway, uh, and now, you know, if f4, then the bishop would actually slip back to e4. So this is avoided because this is actually nothing, and it's like nice for black, and he's protecting his d5 pawn. White does not want that. Instead, knight b5. So now white wants to put a knight on d6 
and that would basically hit d5 because then it would interrupt the protection of d5 rook e8 and it's here that white does actually want to protect his pawn so f4 threatening f5 winning a piece so the bishop goes here now but now knight d6 full king uh, hitting the rook the rook moves to e7 and now we have this undermining move we've we've blotted out the protection of d5 so it's hit hard c4 d takes c4 bishop takes c4 and the position to me already ha is showing signs of remarkable transformation um, it seems that the d takes c5 has worked beautifully from earlier because did white need the dark square bishop not really he's got great coordination and pressure in this position and is immediately threatening things like queen d4 uh, to put even more pressure on black the bishop um, drops back and we have queen c2 now uh, threatening bishop takes f7 and queen takes c5 so the knight goes there but you see that we've got this pawn roller potentially rook a d1 whoops pardon me c c4 d takes here queen c2 knight e6 rook a d1 threatening now knight takes f7 hitting the queen queen plays check and now uh black has black is nearly busted in this position uh, because white has this great inertia with the pawns supported by the rook black plays g6 and now you know it's easy to play for white to play f5 i think many of us would be tempted to play f5 so yes i i don't know what you guys think but when i looked at this game i thought what on earth was this about how did this remarkable transformation occur it's amazing it's a beautiful attacking position now uh, so knight d4 queen d2 with tempo and the queen you know with tempo is, is potentially getting into dangerous squares uh, knight takes f5 it's not a very good defense here knight takes f5 black just gets blasted can you see well can you see what white white play what would you play here with white anyone In fact, this is a silly question. The position is already really quite crushing. There are at least two moves which are really crushing, which are glaringly obvious. So forget my question, but you can say the answer afterwards. Uh, rook takes f5 is actually stronger to sack the exchange than knight takes f5. So well done if you did rook takes f5. And the point is here now, well, knight takes f5, threatening a mate in three with check, check and queen g8 mate and black really has got very little defense here uh you see the queen and knight are coordinating quite beautifully as attacking pieces um and also of course the rook is is hanging here so it's a pretty defenseless position if if rook takes e5 trying to save the rook then we, we have that mate in three as i've just mentioned uh, this position taking or, or here is mate uh, so if the black king wants to save itself white could just take that rook thanks very much end of game really so yeah i i thought this was a sweet game and a bit unusual uh if you just want a quick review because it's quite a shocker for me i don't know about for you how the transformation from this position occurs just with capturing away from the center and getting this position is apparently it's cr increasing the availability of some critical forcing moves knight d4 it's not just centralizing the knight it's what shall we say introducing forcing moves as well into the position because it's unblock unblocks the f pawn and in this position with the bishop on e4 we're not just talking about one or two it's, it's like a winning set of forcing moves that are introduced here potentially so knight takes e5 is just not even possible and the knight just goes to d6 and then 
it blocks that d5 and why it logically undermines d5 gets loads of pressure and it's just a steam steamroll to steamroll his opponent quite crushing so anish giri seems i don't know he knows what he's doing huh with d takes c5 anish giri quite dangerous uh and in the next game he only needed the draw right with black should we have a look at the other game with black then oh sorry there was a question about what if rook take rook d7 we have the check check and we have that classic mate again because the knight stopping e7 right doesn't help okay now i have actually didn't really check out the other game uh so in fact i shouldn't really go over it because i didn't really check it out in detail i'm just having a quick through playthrough yeah so black managed to win in the second game so anyway so what did Wojtaszek, is it Wojtaszek? he was knocked out okay this is another interesting game Zvidlet against Topolov so this is on the other part of the results tree uh, now yeah this I've played through this game a couple of times at least and yeah it's it's a so Topolov was actually the top seed of the tournament right uh, so Zvidlet knocked him out let's have a look how what happened there Zvidlet against Topolov zoom out results tree zoom out no my, my results tree is not okay let's reset okay zoom that against top of it's somewhere on the results tree it's on the left still okay this is why zvidra is going to be facing way e yeah so peter zvidla playing white against top of this is in round 4.1 4.1 so the first classical game that's what 4.1 means it because they have two classical games yeah to start off with in in, in, in the first six rounds it's two classical games so e4 top love plays the sicilian defense knight f3 d6 and we have quite a popular move instead of the usual d4 the second most popular is actually this annoying bishop b5 check uh we have knight d7 white castles and a6 bishop f1 dropping all the way back b6 d4 c takes knight takes d4 and now white sets up that dreaded moroxy bind so my my question here was actually quite a silly one perhaps but can't black like just take the pawn so let's see why can't black take this pawn so White sets up the bind, but if knight takes e4, can you see what's wrong with this? What's wrong with this for black? Anyone know? Actually, it's quite topical on the previous game, the forcing moves of the previous game. Can you see? What does white have here an important forcing move anyone and someone's mentioned bishop d3 hmm, bishop d3 hmm, no the knight could go back If here 95 black might be okay apparently not bishop d3 <coughs> queen f3 mentioning mm, apparently knight e5 is here is good for black no 
apparently the proxy move f3 is again the hero of the position believe it or not now i don't expect you all to start playing the move f3 when the opportunity comes but yeah it's just a coincidence that this is actually a good forcing move here um if if the knight goes back here now we have knight f5 and you might wonder well why is threatening knight takes d6 checkmate uh, so if knight e5 now f4 another forcing move and where does this knight go does it go here then we've still got knight takes d6 check winning the queen yeah things have things explode apparently when the move f3 is played so you can't trust your your senses in chess you need to at least calculate f3 in every position you have because it could be a lethal move leading to destruction of the black position the humble move f3 so a beautiful trap here in case you didn't know it then just letting letting the e pawn go because you've got the move f3 it's really destructive because bishop d3 is blocking actually d6 if you think about it there's a logic here um and then we've you know still got pressure on d6 here yeah yeah amazing isn't it and if the, the best black has apparently is to give up d6 and this doesn't look too appetizing so anyway yeah Toplov is not taking on e4 no he keeps the tension of the game going with e6 and we have knight c3 bishop e7 and we get a classic kind of setup for both sides where white enjoys this Maroxy bind and I always thought this is really kind of high class mature chess when you've got this bind and you let your bishops sort of drop back to the first rank lays around and they look good together and you, your rooks look good the pawns look good everything looks good in the position and you want to clamp down the opponent's counterplay and yes Anatoly Karpov did like to play the Maroxy bind apparently as well so this is the kind of strangulation chess yeah that sometimes Vidler plays and we, we do get uh, a move which creates tactical chaos from black here which which is potentially double-sided double-edged this h5 because okay I mean such a move either aiming you know as a battering ram for white structure or sometimes just marking out key dark squares and you know black's going to put a lot of pressure on the center and even if the pawns won even if the h pawns won black will try and drum up you know tactical pressure uh, so white carries on making his position look even stronger with b3 supporting c4 knight e5 teasing white to play the move f4 teasing yes uh, now if if white doesn't play to kick this knight then maybe it's the case that this happens and the structure is challenged so actually that knight is kicked back and okay white's weakened e4 now and you know when black now plays queen a it's it's with greater pressure on e4 so we have b4 again now weakening c4 so it seems vidler has gone into weakening pawns everywhere now queen a8 to so that battery on e4 bishop d3 bishop e7 uh, because okay no bishop e7 and now now we have a move which is is potentially fixing black a bit in, in activities h3 the bishop can potentially go to this h2 square and maybe even crawl out like this potentially rook c7 rook e2 and then we have h4 it looks like quite a committal move if given time black will swing a knight into that g3 square but isn't the pawn slightly loose this is where tactical chaos is being created bishop f2 knight h5 uh, protecting and still potentially coming in to g3 at some point knight f3 so threatening to actually just win that pawn black plays knight g3 check 
in doing so winning white's dark square bishop is like potentially weakening the dark squares in white's position white's going after that pawn and you might think has black got enough compensation the engines well fritz thinks thinks you know black's got a bit of compensation here he has won the bishop pair from white knight f6 queen takes g3 knight h5 queen g4 knight f6 they repeat a bit and now white actually in this position chooses queen h4 which kind of looks like silly because isn't knight takes e4 on in this position this was my next dumb question about this game which i was hoping to answer dynamically with you guys with the engine turned on why isn't knight takes e4 possible in this position i can cheat now knight takes e4 ah yes there's a move for white which is obvious now that i see it if this this didn't happen uh g6 happened in the game so why can't black play knight takes e4 what has white's white's play here can get an advantage apparently can you see how What would you play here with white? <clears throat> yeah, knight g5. Whoops. Knight g5 threatening a mate in two you know the check and here and if this knight goes back here crikey is it that bad oh my god check is is completely winning apparently um because if if this one this is the simpler one then there's knight takes f7 mate and the more complicated one here white's got a crushing move in this position white to crush here can you see what white can play in this position Uh, so we got this position with the bishop on h7 right what does white play in this position anyone yeah apparently apparently bishop g6 uh, so it's got the threat of a mating two, two of check and a mate well oh, right and if takes check now not here that's nothing black's actually winning there because knight g5 bishop takes no in this position we've got knight takes e6 check and queen takes g7 so yeah it's another kind of little trap behind the scenes that um top of avoids so knight takes e4 would be a poisoned pawn basically yeah so he actually plays um g6 being the top seed he sees a lot of stuff but white plays knight g5 anyway so it, it it's kind of dangerous this position anyway it seems white's got an ideal attacking position looking at h7 these are the sort of positions i love to play especially in bullet tournaments 
where you just you just want to make quickly on h7 yes get it over and done with get onto another game so yeah this looks really good attacking position so queen d8 rook d1 knight h5 so black's using that defensive battery now queen g4 and this here black is threatened to be dismantled with knight takes e6 so we'll be dismantling black quite a bit uh we have e5 which concedes the d5 square white goes into that bishop, bishop takes e takes and now white is resting knight takes f7 black just in time takes off that knight f takes knight f4 and it looks on the surface that okay white is a pawn up but they are double pawns black's got a nice knight on f4 it seems has he got some compensation it's not a full pawn up is it because of those factors rook c2 uh, we have b5 um and now c5 was played and possibly if black wants to stay in the game well the engine suggestion here is to take off this this guy uh, but this doesn't look too healthy bishop takes g6 it doesn't look too healthy on knight e3 there's check check this is not a nice position for black so it's actually a pretty bad position after c5 in fact uh, knight takes d3 was played rook takes d3 these these pawns there's going to be a protected pass pawn coming on the queen side e4 black tries to use his pass pawn now this is a bit tricky actually because if rook e3 i think black plays d takes hitting d5 so that that would not be too clever so this is why rook d4 it seems a bit more technical but it serves two purposes to keep d5 protected is a very important purpose of rook d4 we have e3 even though it seems to let the pawn slide down a bit but now white creates that protected pass pawn on c6 so if he can handle this pawn he's going to be massively in the driving seat rook e5 threatening stuff like this h4 supporting g5 trying to get behind black's pawn it's blocked queen b6 g3 yeah white has got now a nice protected pass pawn on the queen's side and has blockaded black's pass pawn so let's see the technique of peter's viddler now a5 king g2 a takes a takes queen a7 trying to do something over here maybe queen a1 in fact yeah queen a1 there's something naughty something naughty like this rook d3 now in this position if queen a1 it's it's kind of stopped in its tracks actually with queen d4 and queen c1 queen c3 it's like the queen is being exchanged off it hasn't really can't run it can run but it can't hide or it can lose that e3 pawn so black didn't go in for queen a1 actually after this it's rather delicate move which vacates d4 for the queen rook e4 check queen d8 resting queen takes d6 you might wonder again isn't isn't this possible to try and get this business in well actually f4's the rook needed to be there didn't it so queen a1 i think white can just take on d6 without being punished so black played rook takes b4 and it is a pretty bad position actually rook d1 is played 
which might be preventative to rook b2 because black was actually threatening here rook b2 uh, to try and get this in if, if white d does a casual move hang on rook b2 just equalizes on the spot rook takes b2 e2 and it's going to be apparently it's it's equal this position because actually the queen is looking at g1 and this this position apparently is is equal but no again Svidla does a very delicate move which apparently it, it keeps control of the position rook d1 against rook b2 now white can play white can just take here and play rook e1 so yeah it is designed it seems against that deflection so rook d1 cool rook b e4 queen takes d6 finally under very safe circumstances so he's got two connected past pawns now queen a4 he gets behind that to try and put pressure on that finally now here he goes for the black king okay he can't move this but he goes for the black king with h5 if you can strip open the h5 this is going to be big trouble for black's king safety black's king safety is eroded um apparently no no this might have been uh, a slight slip up apparently already in this position fascinating king g1 for rook h2 apparently is a really strong plan instead in the game continuation here it looks really dangerous what was played this g6 but maybe it's the case that Topolov slipped up slightly he took on g6 i think that sealed his fate this uh, apparently it's it's like sealed his fate black has in this position f5 uh, to defend that mate threat you know white's threatening a mate in two with check and, and mate but apparently in this position and let me see if you can bust this apparently this is equal believe it or not if you don't believe it tell me a move for white I'll give you 20 seconds apparently this position is equal So black defending laterally. He's now threatening queen takes d5 on your king as well. So the game could run like this to be equal. Check and perpetual check. If here, yeah, it's just perpetual check time. Well, no, in the game, yeah, Topolov, okay, it seems as though this is a big howler at move 57. He took here, check, and, and now queen takes h5 is, is very good for white. Threatening to snap off this pawn. Queen d4, because it actually is protecting d5 as well. Now the queen is looking at quite a few squares around the king here. Yeah? We have rook a2, so the rook is coming in to help the queen. The back row has been neglected here, in fact. It seems that black's back row is all of a sudden quite weak. Rook f4, check. He's got him around the back here. Check, check, and there's a nasty thing on the queen king f7 check and splat checkmate uh, so yeah so it seems Topolov uh, nearly I mean with very resourceful defense could have drawn this game isn't that a shame <laughs> it was a very tense game 
in the next game, uh, uh, Svidler, he just needed a draw, and I know a little bit about it, so I might as well mention it. I'll, I'll get to a critical position. So Topolov uh, needed to win the next game, but in fact, I'm going to get to a critical position rapidly here to show you what I know about it from, from actually the chess page report. I'm going to get to a critical position, pardon me. Uh, yeah, Topolov was pressing with white for an advantage, but he kind of messed things up uh, in this position. Okay, this was the position that moved 37. So he had potentially a small advantage, but he he, he let Svidler get potentially a winning position. But all, all Svidler needed to knock Topolov out was to draw this game with black. So this, this was in round 4.2. Svidler just needed a draw with black. White had played bishop takes a5. Uh, queen b5 very very resourceful move uh, when I say resourceful I mean what was white threatening in fact well white was threatening something to do with the queen yeah an attack on the queen so queen b5 knight c4 and this might be a slight mistake maybe queen c4 was better because now black plays knight takes a5 knight takes a5 Queen takes c5 and yeah Zvidler's on the back row again like the first encounter he's actually getting to Topolov's back row because um, after knight b3 the queen goes to c3 you know to set up this you know mate on the back row and in fact Topolov uh, is in a bad state here uh, to stay in the game apparently he would have to play technically knight e2 to stay in the game and after queen e1 I mean this this is contortions to stay in the game apparently because black is threatening knight h5 to take away the square so knight c5 if knight h5 here there's queen takes e6 that's the point of knight c5 to pin down that knight uh, this this would apparently stay in the game just about for white though white's like worse um white's worse but in the game he actually played a disastrous move and if pitts Vidler cares a lot about rating points i know he might have calculated this out for a win but it's it's the case that queen e1 is this this is where they agreed a draw so it's Vidler really wanted the rating points this is a winning position for black it's like plus four with queen e1 threatening queen g1 checkmate and the analysis basically goes like this um uh how does it go yeah knight e2 knight h5 stopping the king running to g3 so now we're threatening queen h1 and after a token check king g6 white's getting mated and if you think otherwise well this is what the engine thinks that white's getting mated you can throw in another check it doesn't help you can throw in another check it doesn't really help these are spike checks you're getting mated yeah so Svidler could have actually won this mini match 2-0 but you know if you just want to knock someone out you just agree a draw that's friendly isn't it but yeah he Topolov had cracked up so in both games yeah it seems his back row was a bit weak uh, he overextended so, you know Zvidler's great attacking isn't he a chest though Zvidler okay uh, now another game of interest is how is the Wesley so against Maxim Vachela Grav I wanted to have a look at Vachela Grav even though this is super complex super involved stuff 
uh, I'm still awake hopefully you are so let's have a look where's he so one of the great American hopes now yeah against Maxim Vachel the Grave the top French guy does anyone want to have a look at this game it's uh it's only 68 moves yeah okay so where's he so playing white should we have it from the white or black perspective okay I'm gonna ask you do you, want, do you want it from the white or black perspective this is Wesley so against Max and Vechler graph should I just keep it with the white perspective Wesley so was playing white against Max and Vechler graph did you have any preference black all right okay I like taking it from <laughs> Spo spoiler spoiler alert <laughs> look this is not if you want tension right go, go and I, I those people that want tension I tell you I recommend Alfred Hitchcock just go and get the collection from Amazon get a good discount he's the master of tension if you want tension yeah go and get the Hitchcock collection it's brilliant the master of suspense and tension now we're playing it from the blacks perspective that's my preference okay so where's the so playing white <laughs> look do you want me to do a straw poll do you, do, you, do you want me to take time out to do a straw poll here uh, okay okay all right I don't know how many of you know the result you probably guessed it because I did say who was knocked out do you want a straw poll okay all right all right okay let's do this all right white or black perspective I'll give you I'll give you a couple of minutes okay so this is Wesley so again Wesley so versus MVL I'm not allowing multiple votes there's only one vote vote here now I'll take the result in about a minute or two Four to one, my perspective. Four to two. Anyone else voting? Five to four. It's about equal, isn't it? The votes. Okay, I'm going to give it a minute. Okay, I'll give it a minute. Up to, up till ten twenty six on my clock. It's 10.25, a few more seconds to vote. Yeah, you've got a few more seconds. All right, we're taking it from the white perspective, I think. It's approaching 10.26 on my clock. It, it was a close vote nine to seven okay it was a close vote why why isn't my clock going now my clock is still saying 10 20 this is the longest minute ever i've experienced the whole day it's 10 26 it's nine to eight it was a close poll close one there okay So Wesley So playing white, knight f3, we have c5, c4, knight c6. And yeah, you might think, let's open up the position, d4, c takes, knight takes, knight f6. It's well trodden territory, as you might expect. Now here the most common move is g3, nearly a thousand games. In fact, quite a rare bird move was played, only 137 games, bishop f4. And okay, in case you're wondering about e5, we, we just take that hitting the queen, and we just take on e5, so that'll be a way of losing a pawn for nothing. Okay, so black plays d5, e3, only 12 games now with e3 in this position, 
this is very popular over 200 games with knight, knight here looking at knight c7 check e5 c takes this position is well trodden and the evaluation is supposed to be uh, equal the engine indicates equal as well but no we see the move e3 from Wesley Bishop b4 Bishop e2 both sides castle black takes on c3 b takes rook e8 bishop g5 black arm pins white goes for this d5 pawn to weaken d5 pawn i think that's the whole point of white's play to weaken d5 giving up the dark square bishop he's even liberating the bishop but this d pawn is weak queen b3 hitting d5 it's protected bishop f3 hitting d5 again now black plays knight a5 queen b5 keeping the pressure it seems black's under great pressure and black plays queen b6 not minding the double pawns it's, it seems a bit wretched when i looked at this game it occurred to me uh, now this is just an intuitive thing to say that I, I think Maxim Lech de Grave is a very volatile uh, player on the rating list because it, it seems he has um, this very concrete approach to the game of accepting a wretched pawn structure but he's great in dynamic positions so here I mean if you look at the pawn structure would, would you say this looks like a nice pawn structure on the other hand white's got this 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 weak pawn here as well but white seems to have a beautiful blockade um wouldn't you say i mean let's be honest wouldn't wouldn't you say it's like a tragedy if 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 black managed to win this game <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> but seriously look at the pawn structure yeah which 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 pawns look nicer yeah isn't it, isn't it wouldn't it be a tragedy if black won this game <laughs> seriously from a positional perspective yeah people accuse me of having dynamic pawns look at look at maxim batch the grass pawns is that a wreck or what seriously seriously which which pawn structure looks nicer yeah <laughs> but pawns are not everything okay pawn structure is not everything it looks as though as well white's having a beautiful knight blockade the knight's not going anywhere is it as well yeah <laughs> we've not only got a nicer pawn structure we've got a beautiful blockading knight no wonder you know white's under an anesthetic or something he's thinking his position is so beautiful and you know maxim match the graph he's not really a 2700 he's like a 2400 He's just tactical. There's nothing to him. This is why he has rating swings. I'm sure this is what Wesley So was thinking. That Maxim Vatch the Graph, he's fake. He's not real. He's not a real 2700. He's fake. Yeah? Sorry. This is just personal opinion. <laughs> just personal opinion. Okay. I'm, I'm just jesting. I'm just jesting. <laughs> but yeah. So you expect the tactical players to have some evil tactical resources, right? And you won't be disappointed. You will not be disappointed by Black's evil resources yeah sorry sorry <laughs> it's it's just horrible i don't know i find black's positions horrible <laughs> even me i just find it horrible what is black up to here <laughs> so rook fb1 black black does not deserve to win this game it's not a tragedy <laughs> sorry 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 I, 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 i'll try and cool down i'll try and cool down i, I just just ignore that i'll just try and cool down yeah okay no okay knight c4 yeah knight c4 <laughs> so he's protecting his b6 at least yes his d5 isn't dropping off immediately rook b4 and black actually has now rook a3 based on facilitated by the double pawns the rook is able to come into a3 yeah <laughs> so we have knight b5 
<laughs> Black B5. I'm just joking, I'm just joking. And now, okay, the, the Rook has prompted the Knight to go to B5. The Rook evilly goes back to A5. Apparently, as a sideline protecting D5. Yeah, Ice Cool, Ice Cool. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm going to go back to Ice Cool commentary. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So H3. So Wesley's thinking. <laughs> I'm not going to go on about what Wesley's thinking, okay? All right, Bishop D7. <laughs> and that, he's thinking, what? He's thinking, can't I just win this d5 pawn? Why? You know, all my play has been designed for winning the d5 pawn, and this clown now leaves it unpraised, and I can't see a single reason why I can't take this pawn on d5. Yeah. What has he done to his structure? You know, my whole point of White's play was to put pressure on d5, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, this is the most outrageous game. So White does take on d5. I, I, you know, honestly, do you, does anyone see a problem? Any problem, if you haven't seen this game, with bishop takes d5? No, seriously. Do you, do you find there's any problem with bishop takes d5 now? Come on, all you positional players. Come on, you, you know, you positional players, you know, this, this superiority complex over tactical players. You know, oh, you've got a neater pawn structure. You've got a nicer pawn structure. Oh, yeah, it's immature to play like black. It's really immature. Well, go on then. Do you want to take the pawn on d5? Does anyone see any issue with bishop takes d5? Seriously. <laughs> you've seen the game before. If you've seen any issue, you've seen the game before. The, the people that, can, that say that there's an issue, they must have seen this game before, right? Come off it. So white takes on d5. Yeah? So th this knight's loose. Now black just plays knight e5. And we've got all these loose pieces all of a sudden. Black's weak pawn on d5 has lured white to have all these loose tactical issues, tactical piece issues. What is going on here? How do you actually avoid losing a piece now you know if you move the knight then there's rook takes d5 thanks if you protect the bishop then there's bishop takes b5 takes rook takes d5 thanks or rook takes b5 we can slow this down again rook takes b5 we'll take the, here yes we're just losing a piece it's evil it's evil stuff how, how do you avoid losing a piece Knight c7, we just play rook c8, and then we've got two pieces hanging. So if any if any of you hear these 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 coaches saying, "Oh yeah, you should have a nice pawn structure," they're, they're just they're just lulling you into a full sense of security because when they play you, they'll give you this apparently weak pawn, and then you're going to have pieces dropping off. You're going to have loose piece issues. So you're going to be worried when people talk about nice pawn structure. You know, so yeah, Wesley so has just fallen into a nasty trap here. There's, I don't know, f4? Do you want to try f4, attack a piece? Unfortunately, rook takes b5 and we're on this one. And if we take here, we're on this one. It doesn't help. We're still losing a piece. There's no way of not losing a piece here. It's evil stuff. So when you're playing a tactical player, you can't, you know, you can't, what's it say? Look, look the gift horse in the mouth. Don't accept gifts. Apparently gifts, apparently I read in a report earlier, uh, the, the word gift in German means poison or something. Can anyone cons confirm that? Gift equals poison. 
in German. I don't know. I don't know anything about German. I didn't study it as a language, but apparently on a report, I think it was a chess page report, gift equals poison. Agree? In German, does anyone know German? Gift equals poison. So this, this pawn gift is actually poisoned. It's a poisoned pawn. So anyway, Wesley So plays rook e4. He's going to get a few pawns for it. Rook e4. Okay, I'll try and cool down now. Eyes cool. Eyes cool commentary. Try and cool down. White's just the piece down. Knight g6. He plays bishop takes f7. Yeah. Again, c4, we just play bishop takes b5. Yeah. So white tries to get a few pawns. He plays bishop takes f7. Knight d6 check. And he gets this fork. Bishop c6. Again, he's got pieces being attacked here. Rook d4. Rook takes d4. Knight takes a5. Rook d6. So we get to this ending here where white's got loads of pawns for the knight. Uh, should white like lose this? He's got so many pawns for the knight. Hasn't he got enough pawns for the knight? You might be wondering. Well, let's see what happens. A4, rook takes c3, a5. It's two pawns for the knight. Check, rook c2. The problem is there's pressure points. F2 is a pressure point, knight f8. h4 knight d7 and we have a lot of maneuvering now i'll get you uh get you a critical position white defends f2 there's a critical position coming up i'll tell you why it's critical in my opinion uh it's here this is a critical juncture of the game a critical juncture of the game on move 42 What would you do here? Do you want to let f2 go? There's a price to be paid if, if you play g5. So who would vote for rook a6? Actually, as an example, or g5. White play here. You've got a choice of actually lesser evils, actually, because the move g5 does something bad to your position, which I'll mention. What would you play here with white? What would you play here? Critical position, move 42. I don't know. Maybe maybe Black's just winning, actually. Maybe this is a ridiculous question. Maybe Black's winning, whatever happens. It, it's only two pawns for the knight, yeah? What, what would you play out of interest? If, if there is any logic to this, we might as well explore it. All right, okay, the theoretical problem with g5, okay, I'll, I'll just mention the theoretical problem might be is, is that it fixes the pawns. The pawns are fixed now as targets. Uh, Nimzovich has talked about, you know, restrain, blockade, destroy. Um, if, you look, if you look at that expression from Nimzovich, I mean, basically targeting, gen general hunting, you know, when you go hunting, it's better if you haven't got a moving target. So it's like, you know, why it's less of a moving target because his pawns are fixed. Uh, to keep the pawns fluid would, would involve a pawn sack. This is actually the engine choice to play rook a6 and it does keep these pawns fluid but i don't know maybe black's still still winning knight takes f2 say these checks if here we got loads of checks and i don't know how black if he if he really is desperate to get out of the checks like he ends up losing g6 anyway losing a pawn and it comes really tricky maybe but this this sort of position um, might be drawable who knows it hasn't been analyzed yet by the major analysts it's too new 
but from an engine point of view this position as an example is only I'll give you an engine valuation for it is like 0.34 to black that's less than half a pawn basically so maybe it's technically possible for white to draw this but from the theoretical side that we can remember it's like keeping your pawns fixed or not it can be like a choice of lesser evils if you get this in your own games so anyway g5 whoops g5 on move 42 the white pawns are now fixed okay so let's see how the game progresses from here knight e1 uh, the threat is now rook g2 and doing something horrible after that rook here okay check knight e5 rook c6 the rooks come off and now the king really wants to get into like the white position somewhere like d4 king e3 king d6 and the king's trying to get into the white position so threat is now king c4 trying to get white into a zugs man if e5 yeah that would be beautiful for the knight that would be end of game immediately a knight on f5 now here f5 um now this f5 looks dangerous trying to create a dangerous pass pawn um and that that would actually be drawing just to take g6 that's drawing for for white that draws but the move which keeps black with a win is to set up a nasty blockade knight e8 encouraging white to take on g7 i don't think f6 helps either because then there's blockading knight on e6 holding everything and then white will be run into zugzwang uh, the problem with the fixed pawns in in end game terms is the propensity of getting a zugzwang position so you can't move any of these pawns once the blockading knight comes in uh, you'll quickly be in a zugzwang um when I say quickly yeah I'm pretty sure you're gonna be in a zugzwang here yeah everything starts dropping off eg this position so white actually took on g6 but it's still it's, it's gonna be a zugzwangable position because there's a blockade here anyway even though black's only got one pawn left uh, it's just hopeless this position the pawns are dropping off e6 now e6 is trying to get f5 for the king but white's not having any of that sorry black's not having any of that he didn't play this because that just throws that actually loses to king f5 that actually loses uh this is lost for black no he doesn't want to do that he just plays calmly king d5 keeping the king out e7 and now keeping the king out of e6 king e6 so both of those are keeping the king out of f5 and now this is not good now white will be zugdwangs here um, white resigns here on move 68 uh, if he plays like okay if we play like this uh, we, we're going to lose territory here Hang on. Knight f5 eventually. All right, knight f5. We just take this and then we run our h pawn. It's not even about getting the king into white's position anymore. It's just that that would be a zugzwang if knight f5 occurs to win h4. So even even king e8, this position. If king f6, king f8, king e5, king e7, king f4. King d6. We're getting into a zugzwang. Now here, knight f5. If we get this position, it's it's a zugzwang. Does everyone agree? Zugzwang. Everyone agree? Uh, if you if you go here it's hopeless we just take that 
Does, does everyone agree this is a Zog's one? King f3. We need to take on h4. Come back. We'll take here. The pawns are all going. So that, that relates back to that earlier question, you know, about the lesser evil. Do you want to keep your pawns fixed or fluid? So that might come up in your own end games. It's maybe something to bear, bear note to. Okay, are you all getting these amazing points from this amazing commentary, yeah? So could you analyze Ding Liren versus Wei E 4.5 later on? It ended in a draw, but uh, it was a tactical one. Ding Liren versus Wei E 4.5. Hmm. Is there any other games I've briefly played through that I might want to mention? Hold on a sec. <clears throat> I think I've covered the main games that I wanted to mention. King e4 is your question, is it? Knight takes h4. F g7, king f7. And again, it's kind of the knight's keeping thing out. If the king go, tries to go in there, king g7, and king g6 and it's zugs man again okay um caruana's knockout i've mentioned on on the youtube channel if you wanted to see um mamadariov's destruction of caruana it's on the youtube com king's crusher channel i quite enjoyed looking at that game we didn't look at how Aronian. um got knocked out does anyone want to see the first game of the Aronian match from a few days ago are, are you, anyone intrigued at how Aronian knocked out I did I did play through that that's what the heck is this windows feedback I don't want to give windows feedback. go away go away go away oh my god go away okay, let's have a look at the Aronian game if you want um do you really want uh, okay hold on. is there a more exciting game let me just think about this kramnik was knocked out pretty early by andrekin grischuk oh yeah aljanov was killing everyone to start off with and he knocked out grischuk rajabov got knocked out by svidler Was that something exciting about that? Or well, not particularly? Oh, th there was a point of note on the Zvidla Rajabov game, a tactical point of note, which might actually make it worth going through that quickly to get to a critical position there. Since, since, uh, since I know about it, I might as well tell you about it. Yeah? Briefly. Shall I get to a tactical point of note? So Zvidla against Rajabov, right? This is in round 3.4. So Zvidla was playing white and Rajabov played the Grunfeld. Zvidla's like an expert with black in the Grunfeld. We have this bishop g5 line, which I don't really trust because I had this catastrophically quick loss, I think, with bishop g5 recently. Well, a few months back. Uh, but anyway, so bishop g7 and knight e4. Is, is another interesting line but okay uh, knight e4 is like one of the main uh, moves in fact but back played bishop g7 and Zvidla just took on f6 and took on d5 and we have d takes and it's it seems though white gets a nice position somehow from the opening a3 threatening simply b4 in fact so black takes that c5 rook c1 yeah i'll get to the position of note uh black is threatening by the way knight b3 now so it covers the b3 square yeah <clears throat> knight d4 h3 yeah, this position's good for white. So Zvidlo somehow has got a good opening so far. 
So it was like plain sailing for the moment. And he calmly doubles rocks. And yeah, somehow the opening has gone wrong. Uh, would you agree for black? The, the opening doesn't seem great. Knight CB5, white's even got that lovely B5 square. Bishop A2. Threatening now, in fact, might be threatening B4 at some point. Bishop C4, B3. And the position looks wonderful. Now here, uh, Svidler goes a bit crazy, right? He plays, well, maybe he's overexcited. He plays Knight takes C7. And after rook takes c7, maybe he sees like there's a slight weakness of that last move that the rook's kind of awkward on d8. And he indulges in a tactic which I have no idea actually, this might not be at all instructive, but maybe, I don't know, maybe you get overexcited, you're a pawn up. Yeah, it's good as a pawn up. And okay, so white to play. What, what <laughs> white to play? What, what would you play here with white? Anyone? Anyone? It's a really tempting tactic here, no? You're not tempted by any tactics in this particular position? No tactics that tempt you? No? Come on, come on. Tell me some tactical moves here you might consider. Yeah, yeah, 96. And black kind of believed this tactic. Uh, he played bishop takes e6 and it leaves white with a great position. But apparently, uh, f takes e6. This is this is like an evil Maxim Vacher Lagrave type tactic. You know, he's not playing this game, but I'll just mention it. So d takes e6, and it looks as though this bishop's pinned against the rook, doesn't it? it looks as though that's a simple pin against the rook, but black has this evil resource in this position black to play black to play can refute this can you see what black can do in this position Anyone? <laughs> oh man, oh man. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to say, because you're not voluntary. Okay, black has actually got rook takes c4 here. And whatever way white plays it, it's it's a problem. Here, uh, there's bishop takes e6, and if rook takes, queen takes, queen takes, then there's queen d1 check. Yeah. Uh, I also, I did think about this, but I don't think that's as good. White can. I merge with a small advantage. He doesn't have to take here because of queen d1. Uh, you play queen c8 here. So, so actually, this this is the strongest way to play it. You just play bishop takes e6 here. So the queen's like protecting there, and then we've got this bounce to get the rook over here. Yeah. So that kind of backfires on white. 
So the whole thing was backfireable. The whole tactic here, 96, didn't work. But, um, you know, if you're playing someone that's over 2700, you might trust them, I suppose, in an over the board game, that this tactic, which seems to work, you think, okay, they're 2700, they can calculate this, right? Wrong, wrong, they're humans. We're human. Doesn't matter what they are, FIDE, except if they're Sporov or Fisher. Doesn't matter what they are on the FIDE rating list. They're prone to bad calculations, hidden resources. Yeah, it seems F takes E6 would have been just winning. But in the game, we saw Bishop takes E6. It doesn't matter if you want to put a title to it, put a title to it. Super, 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 super GM. Unfortunately, they're still made. They're still human. Yeah? Doesn't matter what title you put to them. The calculation is potentially flawed. You've got to believe that when you play these guys and not just trust, you know, the tactics. Oh, this looks as though it's working. No, look harder. So anyway, the missed opportunity there to, to win on the spot, really, with a massive advantage. So anyway, this position is just horrible for black. Um, so black's now getting stuffed. Check. Bishop takes e6. Uh, <clears throat> so nice pin here on the queen. This is the miscalculation, huh? Rook c6, and it seems so logical. You know, white was a pawn up. You know, the position looked really good. Why wouldn't the tactic work? Uh, but here now, yeah, white's totally in the driving seat. And even though it's opposite color bishops, um, white's like two pawns up here, threatening mate in one. Bishop f5. Yeah, it's, it's not good, is it? G3 h4 now threatening mating one again and now after h takes g5 check black resigned uh, now the reason for this well if king takes well, okay let's go with king takes first maybe, maybe white can just win with even just taking here simplest and just take this pawn he's got loads of pawns he's got three to zero over here that's an easy win. Yeah, that's an easy win. That's probably the easiest. Uh, you're just winning the h7 pawn. Whatever way, you just take the h7 pawn. That's enough to win. Yeah, so, um, okay, I thought I'd mention that. It was a, just a tactical incident which occurred, which shows, you know, they're just human, yeah? But it looked like a great position, and it looked like almost, you know, what I'd say is a weakness of the last move, as if... Surely you'd expect the opponent not to look at the nuances of what they've just done. An unprotected rook. Why not exploit that? It seems like you know, a very tempting tactic, 96 check. But it does backfire. Who said that? Martin Smith has said, don't look at who your opponent is. Look at the chessboard. Yeah, you're right. Wasn't there another quotation... Um, on the chessboard, hypocrisy and lies do not last long, or something. Wasn't that Lasker or something? Um, yeah. But what a counter resource. I mean, it's the engines picking them up, these counter resources. So rook takes c4. Why does this actually work? If rook takes d7, rook takes. See, we're protecting d8. Queen takes the bishop up yeah all right so okay that's that one interesting ah that is a sort of practical point there um what other games did i vaguely look at i think that's about it the main ones so nice carrican win no wesley so went home Imchuk went home early in an early round. Dingler and you know went home. Boris Gelfand went home early, losing to Henrik Villagra very early. Um, 
I think that's about it. It's been like two hours of this, isn't it? Should we, should we just meet up next week? Okay, so yeah, thanks for coming. Uh, I'll find, maybe find some more games next week. If you want to message me on YouTube for any games you want to cover next week, which you think are notable from the World Cup, should we carry on the World Cup theme next week? What do you reckon? Just message me any notable games for next week. But I think we've done two hours now, so that's pretty pretty long time okay so yeah see you next week have a good week thanks very much right, i'm going to stop the broadcast now after a few seconds uh yeah thanks on play chess etc okay cheers then